Hey, good afternoon. This is Greg at the Caddis Fly. Join me today as we tie a, a posse bugger, a popular fly here on the Willamette and the McKenzie River systems. Come join me. All right, guys. Today I'm going to be tying the posse bugger on a size 10 streamer hook. This is a Tiemco 5262 size 10, but you can use any of your streamer hooks. Uh, size 6, 8, 10, 12s. It's got a 1 8 inch. Uh, bead on here and I'm gonna actually make this as heavy as I can you can use tungsten or you can use brass but I'm also gonna add a little bit of lead free wire here about five to six wraps and um, cut that off at the back of my scissors pinch that down well all right I'm gonna be using just a six aught thread here something a little stronger just because it's a big fly We're going to start by locking in that <clears throat> that extra weight. Cinch that down really well. And then I'm going to start building a taper off the back here, right behind here. Kind of lock that in. Like I said, some people like to glue this. You can if you want to. I just don't have the patience to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring that right to the hook barb right there. <clears throat> We're going to be starting this fly off with just some bunny hair with a mask here. I'm going to take a pretty good chunk for my tail. The tail you want to be really nice and full. I'm kind of going for a brown pattern here today, but we'll see what we turn out with. All right, get yourself a nice little tail. I'm going to measure this about three quarters of the length of the body or so. Do a pinch wrap right there. I don't think I cut that long enough. There we go. Now that's some fuzzy stuff right there. Straighten that out. Get yourself a nice buggy tail, just like a hair's hair. Essentially, that's what you're tying. This is just a variation of a hair's hair. And you'll notice I'll start running my thread up a bunch because I'm going to start building a taper all the way up to the lead free wire. And bring this back. Up. What I'm doing is just building a taper right here. I'm going to be running over that quite a few times. Next, I'm going to give this guy a little tail with a flash. So I'm just taking a little crystal flash here. Just take a piece and I'm just going to tie it in on one side first. Just like so. And bring it back and right off the side. Gently pulling it where I want it. I'm going to cut that a little long beyond the tail just so I can uh, cut these together and get them even. I'm just going to come up on this side and get this right here, pull that back. And come back here. Get that where I want it. And start Now what I'm going to do is just take these and pull them together slightly longer than the rabbit tail. There you go, just a little V. And then I'm going to really start working on my taper here with my thread. Going back, coming back to the front, coming back again until you get somewhat of a taper that you like. Next thing I'm going to be doing is my rib, and in this case I'm going to be using Mylar Flash. It's got two sides and I want the gold, so I'm going to tie it in with the silver facing me. 
I'm just gonna tie that on the side facing me. Bring that back and secure all that in. Alright, now I'm going to start dubbing, and I use Wopsy Rabbit, this is my favorite, uh, which you can order here at the Caddisfly, however you can also use something like a Hair's Ear Plus dubbing from a uh, hairline, you can also just use probably Ice Dub if you wanted to, and I am going to use uh, wax on my thread here, because I really want this stuff to lock in, you know, this is a thread wax, and the key to putting the dubbing on is just small quantities. Don't get too carried away with huge pieces. Just start small, because I want this dubbed on fairly tight so I can get a nice uh, tapered body. And I'll just start with dubs about that long or so. The reason why I really like this rabbit from Wopsy, it's got some guard hairs in it. So it gives it that nice, not only that nice action, but that nice buggy feeling. And then I'm going to bring this back and start wrapping up towards the front. Creating a nice taper as I go. Tighten it up as well. Once again, I'm using a little wax here just to really get that dubbing to stick onto my thread. I think the posse bugger would work in any of the trout streams here in the United States. Anywhere you would use a hair's hair, I would use a posse bugger. It's basically just a larger hair's hair. A couple variations though, like the partridge, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. All right, lock that all down nice and tight. Just continue your taper about three quarters of the way up. Just a little bit more. So I'm about three quarters of the way up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my wrap, my tinsel. Get some nice evenly spaced wraps. You can get crazy with different colors on this fly if you wanted to. Olive. I think orange would be pretty cool with brown accents. cut that off there. Now one little thing that I like to do right here is I'll take a little bit of um, ice dub and I just want to give it a little accent, just a little bit different color. So once again I'm waxing all my dubbing today. This is just gold ice dub. Spin it on nice and tight. And this is going to be right underneath my wing case. This nice little accent. It's going to come up right there. Just a nice little different color there, that gold. I'm not sure if that's coming through on the camera, but I love that. Next, we're going to be using some Hungarian partridge feather. What you want to do is strip off all the fuzzy feathers near the base of the feather. Get rid of all that. And here's a little trick that I learned. You got your tip. You grab your hackle pliers and just put that right on the tip. 
Then you can come in here and move them forward to give yourself a nice little V to tie that in. Like so. Take that off. Put your V in. And lock that down. grab my heckle pliers once again and I'm gonna do two or three turns I like these really full you can also take your edge of your scissors or your hand fingers stroke this feather back but just kind of break up the feather a little bit and as we're going around you can also stroke that feather back Two full wraps right about there. And then work your thread through, tie that off. And clip off your stem. Once that's out, stroke all this back. Tie that into place. And I like to go a little bit onto the feathers to really lock them down. Now, kind of make them space throughout evenly. Just you can use your bodkin if you need to, or your hand like so. And I think that looks pretty good.